Well, the weatherman may have been completely wrong about how much snow we were going to get, but he wasn't wrong about the cold temperatures. It was only 4 degrees this morning when I came outside, 10 degrees in the shop when I got up here. I've been working for a couple hours, and it's up to about 15 degrees in the shop. So it's kind of a chilly day in the shop. Unfortunately, what I have to do today isn't going to use the forge very much. So it's going to be a whole lot of work at the treadle hammer, working on sheet metal, which I'm going to do mostly cold. Now the good news is I've got my little propane heater. I'll put that about three or four feet from the treadle hammer. It'll keep me nice and warm. I'll have just a little warm pocket in the shop there where I can work. It'll be easy to warm my hands up if my fingers start to get cold. So what am I working on today? I'm working on a set of custom chest handles. These are some a customer sent me a drawing that he wants acorn back plates for these chest handles. So this is what I'm working on. This is the customer's supplied drawing, which printed out in exactly the right size. So I just printed out two copies of it. And using rubber cement, I glue it to my sheet metal. And this is about 12 gauge sheet metal that I'm using, just a hair under eighth of an inch. And this is what will form the back plate of the handle. I'll cut this out on a bandsaw. Then you, under the treadle hammer, I will chisel in all the details at which point we will go to the forge, get it hot, and do some work over either a wooden stump or a swedge block to give this some definition. Really not a whole lot of hot forging on this, but just enough to give it some character and make it more three-dimensional. Now today's video is not going to be a tutorial. I am not going to describe every single step in detail. I'm not going to explain all the tooling in detail. I'm just going to show you how I go about doing this. I'm just going to let you tag along as I work on this project and get this done because I really do need to get it done and out. So I'm not going to present multiple ways of cutting out the, the back plate. I'm going to cut it out on the bandsaw. I'm going to go to the grinder to clean that cut out up. Then I'm going to go to the treadle hammer to do all the chiseling. There are lots of other ways you can do this and you can explore other ways. Like I say, this is a how I do it, not a how to do it, which you can still learn a lot from. Just don't expect the regular detailed instruction that we usually have. Come on along and we'll get started. Yes, a plasma cutter might be faster, but I don't do enough of this kind of work to justify that kind of expense. So taking 10 minutes to do it on the bandsaw just is not a big deal at all. So this is a job that will be done primarily here at the treadle hammer. And I'll use various chisels and first pass butchers, second pass butchers, things like that to do this. Really an assortment of three or four tools is probably all I will need. If you're working under a treadle hammer freehand like this, make sure you have a stop in place. 
so that you don't smash your hand with the tools. This way I can't accidentally come too far down with the treadle. The next two tools I'm going to use are butchers. The first pass butcher is much steeper and that index is better in the mark. And I'm actually not going to do this part with the butcher. And then the uh, second pass butcher is flatter and it gives the illusion that one thing overlaps. So where I'm using this is actually right here to make it look like the cap of the acorn is above the body of the acorn even though it really isn't. pretty much all of the treadle hammer work from one of these. Now I've been informed in the past by people who know more about video production than I do that having camera angles at 180 degree opposites is somewhat disorienting and confusing. But those were the only two angles I really had to set up a camera where you could actually see the work. So I'm hoping that that all made sense to you and that nobody out there is now lost and confused by the 180 degree off camera angles. But if you're still with me, we now have two acorn shaped back plates with the chasing and chisel work all done. I probably don't need to do anything else. Yeah, I might, we'll see when we get done. But because of doing that, they now arch exactly the opposite of the way I want to. So I'm gonna heat them up in the forge, go to a wooden block. I'm gonna try and sink the cap of the acorn and leave the, the body of the acorn fairly flat, and hopefully that will give it some nice relief. I'm just gonna work this inside the wood block. Nice big sinking hammer or raising hammer, whatever you wanna call it. really pretty much what I'm after right there. Be a little bit refinement back and forth. I'll clean this up. And then I got to turn these into round studs. Some of this needs to be flat. It's got to sit on a, a chest of some sort. So we need to make sure that all the edges will sit down and not have big gaps. I'm going to go through here with a set tool just to clean up my mark to make this look like the cap is taller. You can do this cold under the treadle hammer. But with long handle tools it doesn't hurt to do it hot.
door, go around to make sure everything sits down tight. made an educated guesstimation on the length for my handle material. I'm just going to draw out a nice gentle round taper. And make both ends of both handles the same. Just like most tapers, it starts off square, then I go to an octagon, and then I'll round it up. Make sure both handles match. You can always adjust one to be a little longer if need be. You just get a ring on them that'll engage the little stud that I left. That should work just fine. I'm just going to put a drift in there and I can offset this to center then very easily. Also quenched where I didn't want it to move. That's all I need right there. Do the same thing to the other end. Using a center finding ruler I've lined both the handle and the back plate up so I know right where my bends need to be and now I can mark that and then we'll bend the handles. To make it a little easier to find my bend point, I'm just going to put a divot in at the edge of the anvil, and that way I'll know that's where I need to bend this at. I'm going to find my little notch and bend this first end as close to a 90 as I can. second end, but we don't want to go all the way to 90 yet. And the second
second end, I'm not going to go all the way to 90 so that I can get it over those studs on the back plate. Just going to start it like that so I know where the bend should occur. I'll put that in the vise. Set the handle in. And then bend that up so it goes over the, the handle. Make sure it still pivots. Then do any corrections you need to do to make sure everything looks just right. the last thing I want to do is give it both a good wire brushing and make sure that handle actually pivots. Just like a pair of tongs, if you work it while it's hot, it kind of settles it into position there. Then a little bit of paste wax and this project is done. Well that's it for this project. As I say, this isn't really an instructional video, it's just meant to let you see my process for creating something like this. Those are the tools I would typically use. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I don't own a plasma cutter because I just don't need one for the amount of stuff I do for this. Piece of equipment I don't want to store, I don't want to have underfoot, I don't want to maintain it, and I don't want to pay for it. So the little bandsaw on the grinder is just fine by me. If I were doing this kind of thing day in and day out, I would probably buy a plasma cutter. So I hope you enjoyed watching along as I made these handles. I hope the customer enjoys them. I'm going to at least get these shipped out before the first of the year, even though he probably won't get them until about the 3rd or the 4th of January. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, but then make time in your day to get out to your shop Make something, but stay safe and wear your safety glasses. We'll see you later.